morning, friends. Well, morning for me. I, I always forget and say good morning. Uh, hello, and welcome to this week's live coding. I do it twice a week. This Friday's live coding. Uh, we have been working on a project for a while to build, oh, that's very small. Whip, 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 whip. Uh, to build a live, nope, live coding is what I'm doing. Sip of coffee. to build a dialect quiz bot. So we've done a lot of the machinery that will let the bot actually run. Uh, but what we have not done is is build, build the quiz. <laughs> so right now we have a, uh, a chat experience where you say hi, and then the bot's like, hey, do you want to take a quiz? And you're like, yeah, and then you take the quiz. And the bot's like, I think you're from the United States in this uh, quiz that will tell you which dialect you use from the dialects in the United States. Uh, and that's not fun to do. <laughs> um, so this week we're going to be working on actually uh, building the machine learning underlying the bot that will allow us to detect the uh, specific uh, dialect the person is using. And uh, just in case you were wondering, the, um, the live streaming can all be found in the live coding playlist on the uh, uh, Raza channel, and I went through and tidied it up a little bit, so all the information should be correct, hopefully. Moving on. Doop. So, scooch you on over. Goodbye, goodbye. Uh, we are going to be working on, uh, I'm actually going to pop you back to Chrome for just a second while I, uh, get my file system set up, because I did not do that. And I've been taking Jenny Bryant's very good advice and not saving my uh, working session between multiple sessions for data science development. And I have to remember where my stuff is. I do remember. I just need to, uh, to click down into it. Hope you all are doing good. Had a good week. I have had a very good week. All right. There we go. Uh, back to the, the code. If you're unfamiliar with this, I think I want to be on the other side. If you're unfamiliar with this uh, IDE, this is R Studio. It's for the R language, which is what we're going to be using for. Uh, so you can see I actually do have uh, an R history that does not load. Uh, we're going to be working on data cleaning. So we have a data set that is very big. Uh, and if I try to open it, uh, you will see there's a little pop-up. It says the file big data underscore copy dot text is too large to open in the source editor. The file is 41 megabytes, I'm pretty sure is what the MB is. I always get bits and bytes backwards. Uh, and the maximum file size is five megabytes. So it is a chonker. Uh, and we are going to do a little bit of cleaning with it. Uh, good day, Anarchy. Welcome to the stream. So, nope. That's what I want. It has been uh, a minute since I've done much R work. Um, but for those of you who have been following me for a while, you know that uh, once upon a time, uh, I did the majority of my work in R. So uh, it's like it's like coming back to an old friend. Try not to slurp into the mic. Uh, and the Tidyverse is a meta package that just contains a lot of really, really nice um, data manipulation tools, and since what we're doing today is data manipulation, aka data cleaning, uh, I, I want those. So, bah, 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 bah. Uh, and let's, nope, I'm using the tidyverse, so I want to use underscore CSV, dot CSV is the built-in one to R, and that's a data frame and not a tibble, which is a variety of a data frame. Uh, and it should just be, hmm, hmm, I want to make, yes, thank you. I want that to be the working directory. Uh, so it should just be big data copy dot text and yeah, hopefully this will just work. Great. And now let's check out the head of, nope. Excellent. Okay. So uh, we have uh, a pretty large data frame here. So let's make this bigger. So a data frame, if you're not familiar, is a data structure like a um, um, 
you know, tabular data, like in a relational database, woo, that took a while to come up out of the oatmeal, um, where uh, you have rows and columns and uh, whatnot. It's like, a, it's like a spreadsheet, basically, um, that you can interact with uh, algorithmically. You can not interact with them algorithmically anyway, with code. Uh, and this particular one is uh, fairly large. So it is um, six uh, rows because this is the head of the data frame, which is the first six rows, and 126 columns, which is quite a few. Uh, and the first four columns are information on the person who filled out the data survey the original data survey. Um, so you can see we have uh, the ID of the participant, the city that they're from, the state that they're from, and then the zip code. Uh, and then we have their answers to their questions. And these were originally done as multiple choice questions. Let me pull up the Harvard dialect survey. Um, so this data is courtesy of Bert Vox. Thank you very much, Bert. Um, and his collaborator, who is, it's in the description of the YouTube video, uh, which I am trying to pull up unsuccessfully. Da, 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 da. Uh, Scott Golder. Sorry about that. I just want to make sure that I uh, give him a shout out. So uh, thanks to them for sharing the data. And the Harvard Dialect Survey was a survey that was run in 2003. So it is, let's make this big. Um, so the data is at this point, what, 17 years old. So it's a little bit dated, uh, but hopefully the large uh, dialect markers will not have shifted around too much. Uh, and we're going to look at the original um, survey questions, uh, which, as you can see, this is an archival um, page for the survey. And maps and results. There we go. Okay, so here are the questions. And there are 122 of them. Um, and they're roughly organized in order of linguistic structure, as I remember. So the first ones, the first big bit should be um, um, pronunciation questions or sound questions. So uh, like, do you say poem as one syllable or two syllables? Or uh, for this word, you say pecan, pecan, um, Pekin, I guess. Uh, how do you how do you say these various words? And then the um, next one seemed to be about prepositions. So things like, uh, can you say something like might could or used to could, uh, which I can, but I know a lot of people in the U.S. can't. Uh, or can you say uh, any more to mean something like something that doesn't happen? without having a negation next to it. So like for me, I can say, I can't ride horses anymore. For me is perfectly fine. Um, but I can't say I ride horses anymore. That, that just sounds weird. And like, I wouldn't say that. So that is the difference. That's one of the differences that's included in this quiz. Uh, and then we have questions that are sort of about lexical items, or as, as people who aren't linguists would call them, words. Uh, and these are things like, what do you call the drink made with milk and ice cream? And I'd probably, I'd call that a milkshake. Um, but other people might call it a frappe. Oh, I, I would not. Or a cabinet, or a velvet, or a thick shake, or other. Um, so you can see that frappe in particular seems to be very cent uh, very localized to I don't know, what is that? The Northeast, like Maine, Connecticut area. Um, cabinet is super localized to, I'm pretty sure that's Maryland, because that's Cape Cod. Uh, not Maryland, Massachusetts. Uh, nobody actually said velvet. I'm sure that there are not enough data points for this one for it to be um, uh, de anonymized, would be my guess. Uh, thick shake never heard of that and then other um is the other thing so there's uh for each question people had a number of different responses that they could have provided uh this particular question would be uh only super helpful for figuring out if someone was from sort of like cape cod ish area or 
uh, wherever that is, Boston, I guess. And uh, there's a bunch of questions. There's 122. Now, I don't think that people are going to be willing to actually answer 122 questions as a uh, voice skill slash interaction with a chatbot. And as the Times dialect quiz, and as the uh, New York Times dialect quiz, uh, we're sort of basing it on that. This one, I believe, had 25 questions. So I'm thinking that we're going to find the same 25, probably, uh, and create a smaller data set that's just those questions. Uh, and the reason that we're going to do that is um, because, uh, first of all, 120 is too many. Uh, and also, there's some dialect features that are not going to be very helpful generative discriminators. Um, so I'm trying to find one that I know is not super uh, lexical items are going to be pretty, pretty helpful. Um, No, I guess all of these are going to be a lexical item of somewhere fairly, uh, 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 these aren't lexical items, these are pronunciations, excuse me. Yeah, okay, so this one is fairly, fairly overlappy. Um, so this is the first vowel in the word ant or aunt. Uh, Pranav says, in my school canteen, they sell it as a thick shake. <laughs> it took me ages to figure out. Oh, interesting. Uh, I've never run into that term before. Uh, sorry. Goodness. A little bit of a drippy nose today. Uh, so uh, the red dots here are as in ah. Uh, the blue dots here are ah. Uh, the green dots here are ah, which if you don't have different vowels in uh in ah uh, and aw uh are going to sound exactly the same to you, but for me they are different vowels. Uh, uh, this person, aw, uh, aw, uh, and ah uh, are all the same vowel. Uh, so I guess this would be probably like aunt, because people tend to collapse to the aw. Uh. Uh, ain't, uh, so that seems to be more of a, uh, Appalachia, and then sort of like over and outside of Appalachia as well, uh, and Louisiana. Um, and then uh, this choice, uh, aw to, for, for general aunt, and then ah for a specific aunt. Um, ah for a specific, for aunts in general, ah for a particular aunt, uh, sorry, aunt, sorry. Uh, and then other. So this is an example of, um, Something that there's a lot of variation, so people do a lot of different things, but it doesn't seem to be particularly um, locally bounded. If it, if you, if you see what I'm saying. So if someone was like, "How do you say this word?" and you said, "Well, aunt," um, then aunt would be this map. Uh, that's not going to tell you a whole lot about where they're from. Uh, and you will notice that this area is uh, a little bit um, more heavily populated. A big part of that is because this comes from, the data comes from students at Harvard, which is like in here-ish. Um, so there's going to be more people from that area. And also um, any map of what people do is going to at some point be a population map. So um, in the United States, the East Coast is much more heavily populated than, say, this m middle bit. Um, so Wyoming here is the least populated state. So not all the questions are going to be super helpful. Not all the questions are going to be equally helpful in determining someone's dialect, A. Uh, and B, there's too many of them. So I'm going to uh, offload the work of deciding which questions to use to the people who did who the people who did it earlier, um, and it's the folks who put together the uh, New York Times dialect quiz, which we've talked about a couple times in this in this stream, uh, and that is Josh Katz and Wilson Andrews. Oh, interesting! It's all men. Sociolinguistics is a pretty uh, pretty balanced field, so surprising. All right, so uh, let's do a little. We'll split screen action. Boop. 
Uh, my thinking is that what I will do is, goodbye, lose my, uh, lose my tag forever. Uh, I'm thinking what I'll do is, um, probably have this one over here and then because every time I click into it I'm gonna lose my my place uh, and then I'm going to just um, yeah I'm gonna just create a new text file uh, and let's actually save this as uh, what's a good data Uh, and we'll save this as a uh, question key. Uh, because if we look at the, boop, 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 if we look at the uh, data set, you can see that we have Q001, Q002, Q003, which I'm really hoping correspond to the order of the questions and the version of the quiz that is online. Uh, if they don't, I am going to be sunk and we'll have nonsense answers. I'm pretty sure that they do. Um, and by the one online, I mean this one and not the New York Times one. Uh, uh, Alberto says, here in Brazil, it's much more complicated to work with phonetic stuff, uh, like questions, like questions, like speech sounds. Um, yeah, I don't know a whole bunch about Brazilian Portuguese. I know that Brazil is very linguistically diverse because you have uh, Portuguese, which is sort of the colonial language that was brought over, and then you have a lot of other indigenous languages. Um, and you also have probably, probably some Spanish, uh, I would guess. I, I know it's not the primary language, but I imagine there are some Spanish speakers in Brazil. Um, and that's what I know about Brazil, and I don't know that much about Brazilian Portuguese, unfortunately. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm just going to create a dialogue a key by, by hand. So uh, the first question is, how would you address a group of two or more people? And let's find that. Address uh, a group of two or more question to people. So let's just start a little CSV. Uh, call this question text, and let's call the next one question number. So, uh, no, that's not all I need. I also need the answers of like which, so to pull this back over, woo uh, so we have this one here, uh, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Uh, and then let's really quickly check. Um, it was 50, right? So Q050 and then, uh, sorry, the question text is going to be, how would you address a group of two or more people? Uh, and this is one of the questions that we included in sort of our little sample quiz that does nothing. Uh, and this is text, so let's make sure it is delimited appropriately. Uh, and so that one should have nine values. So it's going to be data original and then uh, dollar sign to get into the uh, let's just get a summary uh, dollar sign to get into the data frame to refer to specific columns. Okay, so it does have nine values, and because these are numbers, these are not going to be treated as categorical. Um, so we have nine values, which corresponds to the number of uh, options. So I, based on this one piece of evidence, I think that these questions probably are actually in order. So now we have sort of a tricky thing where we want to get the correspondence of the question answer to the... Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, hmm. I'm doing 25 of these. At what point will it be more time efficient to build a custom scraper? I think the answer is if I'm doing more than 25. 
to uh, can I do uh, regex were find and replace? I can. And that star. Hmm. Do I need to escape them? So here I'm trying to do a regular expression that will, yeah, there we go. Uh, capture a right parenthesis, any number of characters, and then a left parenthesis, and then replace all. Yeah, fantastic, very easy. And then I want, uh, let's see, A through I, and then a dot, and then a space. <laughs> All right. Uh, is it a colon to do a range? Sorry, I know this is a little bit small. I don't think I can make it bigger, unfortunately. Hmm. Oh wait, 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 wait! I do remember this. Sorry, we are we are getting into. Uh, Rachel's regular expression funhouse. So the regular expression I'm using right now is this, so which should say anything in the range of lowercase ASCII letters between A and I, because those are arranged in order, uh, followed by a single period. Uh, Pranav says, uh, Adalberto, shameless plug, my ACL student paper was on cognate detection, includes Brazilian Portuguese, and I use phonetic encodings as the input to for CNNs in the baseline. Oh, interesting. Uh, that's really cool. Cognates, if you're not familiar, are words that are uh, pronounced similarly in two languages and have similar meanings. So an um, example would be in English we have weekend and in French we have le weekend, um, which is le weekend is a borrowing from English. Or you can have something like uh, fire in English and feu, maybe, fire in French, it's a little, it's a little far. Um, and those share a common root rather than being borrowed. Although a lot of English loan words are actually from Norman French to begin with, which is one of the reasons why we have a lot of things that we have two words for, because um, we had the original Germanic and then we added in some French ones on account of uh, William the Conqueror. All right, so. <laughs> Okay, um, does I, do I have a history in here? So I'm going to actually write down the regexes that I'm doing because I'm going to need to do them kind of a lot. Um, so the first one that I did was... Uh, Sorry, I'm thinking about doing this data cleaning with regular expressions. So if I'm copying and pasting, uh, I am copying and pasting from, let me get it back up, there we go, uh, this guy. And we've got um, this sort of number thing. And then we have these, uh, this, this isn't a number. So this is a letter. So this is the option that it is. And then we have these um, numbers in parentheses after it, which is the percentage of respondents that responded to that re response. A little bit more coffee. <laughs> I'm doing great today. Um, and we can also see, just as a side note, uh, this one, or what you use to address a group of two or more people is really good at helping to identify where someone is. Um, so people from the South tend to say y'all. Uh, people from the north tend to say you guys, uh, you all, uh, a little bit use, which is pretty localized to, I, be I believe Philadelphia, I could be wrong on that, maybe Philadelphia, uh, you lot, which sounds vaguely British to me, um, Ewans, which looks to be sort of 
pretty sure this one's Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania E. Uh, Yins, which I'm pretty sure is Pittsburgh. So, okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Pittsburgh and this is Pennsylvania. Listen, there's a lot of states. Um, and then you, so just the second person plural as the plural, um, and then other, and then yallers, uh, which a little bit in uh, the um, Harvard, uh, Harvard blast zone as well, uh, which I imagine is uh, potentially due to migration effects. Uh, also, a lot of people uh, like using y'all. There's this concept of covert and overt prestige, um, and overt prestige is like sound and fancy, and then covert prestige is sounding like um, Uh, so a really good example would be African-American English, right? So a lot of people, especially teenagers who are sort of like um, white teenagers who are developing their identity will use markers of African-American English, well, often incorrectly, um, to sort of per portray this identity of being like worldly and tough and cool. Um, and then oftentimes uh, when they begin to enter the linguistic marketplace, as we say, and um, are no longer teens uh, will drop those markers. Um, and y'all is one of those markers that has like covert prestige. So it seems like maybe sort of like sweet and folksy. Um, uh, whereas things like you as the plural or uh, use, well, those those are fairly regional terms. Uh, you guys or you all don't have that, that you know, connotation. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people who are using y'all are using it for that sort of overt prestige, whereas you probably, like, I've written a lot of academic papers. I don't think I've said y'all in them. Uh, not that I would address the readers directly anyway, um, because I'm, I'm trying to you know, present as like, oh, you know, fancy and serious. So just a, just a little uh, linguistic ideology for that. Uh, and if you're interested in learning more about uh, African-American English, in particular in this sort of uh, teenage uh, identity construction, there's a really good paper called Yorkville Crossing that I quite like um, by, I want to say Schilling Estes, but I also feel like maybe that's not the right citation. And I am really looking forward to someone writing a uh, TikTok paper about this exact same thing. Uh, Cutler. Sorry, uh, Celia Cutler from uh, New York University. So um, very interesting study if you are interested in why people do these sorts of things. All right, oh, so what I was doing, <laughs> what I was doing was writing down my uh, list of um, uh, regular expressions that I've used. So the regular expressions that I've used have been to do any number of uh, numbers. And then this guy, uh, which I think I can also have include uh, any number of spaces before and after, I'm pretty sure. There are one or more spaces probably, because uh, any number will match zero and the plus will only match one or more. Uh, let's see if that'll work. It occurs to me that uh, I, done, I done messed up a little bit. No more occurrences, okay. Uh, next, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. And then I can replace that with, probably not a comma actually, uh, because that will make it think that there's a differing number of columns. Let's do a uh, semicolon. Fabulous, okay. Uh, so I think that'll work pretty well. Uh, except, of course, that it has uh, replaced it for the first one as well. So let's also put that in as a, uh, a so. And what we can do is we can, um, so we did that one with a comma is what we replaced that. Nope, semicolon. Uh, and then the numbers we just, nope, it needed to be escaped escaped and then any number of characters between two parentheses we're just going to get rid of the parentheses and the characters fantastically um ryan says i randomly picked up y'all somewhere along the way i'm going to throw the quiz off now i mean not necessarily a the data is done um b presumably you'll have other markers that will be more um um 
closely associated with um, other areas that you have a closer connection to, would be my guess. <laughs> All right. And I believe I have also removed my column headers. Question text. Uh, question number. Uh, and Pranav says, I love all these linguistic type equips. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm using my degree. Uh, and Robbie says, hi, Rachel. I'm studying statistics now. Oh, fantastic. Right now we're doing the data cleaning part of data science and probably will not get to the uh, statistics part of data science. Question, nope, question number. But I am a big fan of statistics. So uh, R is a good thing to know if you're doing a lot of statistics. Question text, question number, and the options, responses, responses. All right, fabulous. Okay, so I have the New York Times here. I'm just gonna answer the quiz as we go through. Continue. Oh, no, you need to, uh, okay, I think we're good. You all, excellent, next. Uh, next question, do you pronounce cot and caught the same? Uh, so let's question, let's copy the text. Uh, and this is one that I think most people don't have, uh, don't have a strong um, stereotype about, so they don't have like really good instincts about whether or not these will be different for them. Uh, and for me, they are different. Uh, for most speakers in uh, Seattle, which is where I am right now, they are not. So let's go back. Da, 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 da. All right, so that is question 28. And here are our options, different and same. Okay. Uh, and as you can see, this is another good discriminator. Um, uh, different seems to be focused in uh, sort of this northern cities area um, and this sort of northwest area and um, same is uh, sort of basically the cities that are not northern city shifted, I believe. It's been a minute. Uh, and then the west coast. Oh, excuse me. So, uh, but there is there is some variation. Uh, interestingly, a lot of sort of the uh, the middle value, valley in California, San, the San Fernando Valley, is that the big one? Um, has a lot of markers of Southern English because there was a lot of migration during the Dust Bowl. Um, so some people who live in sort of rural California will have the Pin Pen merger, which is a um, classic Southern feature. A little factoid for you. <laughs> Uh, so what was that? That was Q00, Q028. And then the options were, as I remember, same and different. Da, da, da. Sorry, different and same. It is important that we get the order on those correct. All right, different. D-I-F-F-E-R-E-N-T does not matter that much. And then same. Question three, we are powering right along. Doop, 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 there we go. Okay, next question. Uh, for me, they are different. For a while, I tried to convince myself that I had the merger because I thought that was, I don't know. Uh, and I was like, oh no, yeah, definitely. Definitely they're the same for me. Caught, caught, totally the same word. All right, uh, what do you call it when rain falls while the sun is shining? Uh, so let's look up that question. For me, I don't have a word for this. Um, I do know that some people do. Uh, rain falls. All right, so that is question 80. I have it on, a, on another screen over here. Uh, so that's the text, which we will use to create new form options that we can fill with new slots in our assistant. Uh, and it is Q0 eight zero uh, this should be capitalized and then our options are we got a lot of them mm -hmm. so our options are sun shower the wolf is giving birth the devil is beating his wife monkey's wedding foxes actually i think i've heard monkey's wedding 
Can my cousins say monkey's wedding? My cousins might say monkey's wedding. Uh, fox's wedding, pineapple rain, liquid sun. I have no term or expression for this and other. Uh, and most people don't have a, have a term or expression for this. So let's uh, do our series of two regular expressions. So do all of those, uh, except for place with nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I, I realize. It has replaced the regular expression itself, which is, that's something, huh? We'll do it with this one as well. I don't think I actually want the W slash. I think that was an error. Yeah, do them all. Okay. Nope, just the just the first one. That's sort of weird. Okay, uh, and then put this in double quotes. Sun shower and other. Excellent. Three questions down. Twenty two to go. Uh, Doobie doe sounds good. Robbie says. All right. Um, I think I have no term for this. All right. What do you call the small freshwater lobster often found in lakes and streams? And there's some small options. So this is where I, this is the type of example where I think like a voice assistant really is a good way to present this question. Cause I, what do I say? I want to say crawdad. But also if someone's like, we're having a crawfish boil, I would be fine with that or crayfish boil. But I think I say crawdad. I tried not to look at the options. Uh, and crawdad is an option. Excellent. So what question is that freshwater lobster? Also, not a huge fan. <laughs> uh, I know that they are, uh, many people find great delight in eating them. Uh, I appreciate that you can have like 80 of them in one sitting. That's sort of fun. Uh, but it is not, uh, not my fave. I don't really tend to like um, most crustaceans. Uh, and then the question number is Q066. And the answers are crawfish, crayfish, craw, crowfish, crawdad, mud bug. I have no word for this critter or other critter. All right, so let's do this. And I think actually last time I might have, uh... nope, nope, it sure does just, uh, just remove that. Fascinating. Uh, and then this one, we want to place with a, all right. Uh, and we want to get rid of this first one. And there we go. Uh, if I were doing this for probably 50 questions, I'd probably do a scraper, but because there's just not that many, I don't, I don't, we can do it by hand. That's fine. Uh, plus it's sort of cool to, uh, go through, go through the questions. All right. Uh, I, what did I say? Crawdad? I think I say crawdad. Yeah. But like all of these sound fine to me, except for craw and crowfish. Those are weird. I think I say crawdad. Oh, that must be from my mama's family then. Uh, what do you call a large motor vehicle used to call, carry freight? I would say tractor trailer, uh, or an 18 wheeler. Now that I'm looking at these, I am definitely like, oh yeah, I'd say all those things, but no, it should be like your first instinctual answer. So what do you call R -E -I -G. motor? Ooh, ooh. Okay. So this may not be on this quiz. Uh, what about truck, maybe? Do I have to go through and read the questions? Hmm. Uh, Pranav says, maybe copy paste them, all of them and apply regex in one go. I could, but I think it'll just make it hard to read. Uh, and I can't just like do, you know, the whole thing because the, uh, the questions are on a separate page and it looks like it's wrapped somehow so I can't actually get the uh, 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 or it looks like maybe it's like a 
what's the word I'm looking for? Widget? I don't think that's the word. Um, anyway, I can't just uh, figure it out via, via URL. Okay, so we know it's a lexical term. Uh, so it's probably gonna be near-ish the end. Uh, sandwich, insect, lobster, spider, grandpa, grandma, blah, 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 dust bunnies, little gray creatures, wheel contraption, <sighs> big road, rain, cold, uh, easy course, traffic situation. Pigeon toed, when somebody walks with their feet pointed outward. Oh, I would actually call that a uh, calf need rather than pigeon toed. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. I'm trying to find this particular question. Uh, I'm drink water, public railway system, traffic jam, bag, paper container. Uh, all right, I don't think this question is in the Harper dialect quiz. Huh, interesting. Um, I guess we will answer it and then skip. Uh, so I'd say tractor trailer. Uh, what do you call the night before Halloween? I do not have a name for that. Uh, but let's see if it's in here. Yeah, okay, definitely in our questions. So it is 110. So we're gonna have fewer than 25 questions, which honestly is probably fine. Um, 25 questions is, is a lot to answer in a, in a voice interaction. Like that's 50 turns, it's a lot. Uh, all right, so the question is, what do you call the night before Halloween? Doesn't matter as long as you don't call them late for dinner. <laughs> uh, old, Old dad joke, uh, 110. And then the options are these ones. Boop. And nope, we don't want any of them. All. Maybe it would be easier just to do it. Well, I'd still have to go back and fix the first one by hand for all of them. What if I put a semicolon here as well? Will that protect it? Probably not, but it might. Uh, and replace that with a semicolon. Replace all of those. Thank you kindly. And... Nope. Yep. All right. I'm going to have to go back and call this data cleaning and not training classifier. Ooh. All right. So, what do you call the night before Halloween? I don't have a word for that. Next, looks like most people don't. Uh, how do you pronounce the second syllable of pajamas? Um, so my question, my, my worry here. My worry here is that if I have this as a voice interaction, people are going to hear what the voice says and then they're going to probably say whatever the voice says so i think that this will actually probably um bias people one way or another and i think at some point it might make sense to go back and add this question uh add a question like this <laughs> excuse me uh, if I can find a way to get out not just the text from Alexa, um, but the, excuse me, um, the speech sounds or, um, like some, some way of capturing this variation in pronunciation, but I don't know if that's going to work because I think it'll only give me the words out. And originally I thought that I would be able to get that information out, like the, like a close transcription, and I don't think I can, um, And I can't trick somebody by saying like, hey, can you say just the second syllable of the word pajamas? Because then jam is a word, but jam is not. Um, 
it is, I think, a McElroy joke, but that is not a j thing that I would expect to have in a lexicon um, served by Amazon. So I'm not going to include this. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to skip this question. All right. Uh, what do you call the long sandwich that contains cold cuts, lettuce, and so on? Uh, very, very informal quiz here. Uh, yeah, this one I can definitely, can definitely include. And let's just search for sandwich. All right. So that is shoop -a boop uh, copy the text first. And we're, we're almost halfway done at this point, so I'm not actually considering the questions that we've got. We are exactly halfway done now. Uh, and I'm okay with erring on the side of slightly fewer questions for this voice quiz, again, just because I think it's going to take longer. Uh, and you have the, like, in the in the visual version of the quiz, you have the feedback of like those heat maps, which I think are really cool and um, intriguing for people. But for uh, a voice skill, you you will not have that. So uh, 64, and then our options are, what would I call this? I don't know what I'd call this. Uh, Sub grinder hoagie hero poor boy no no poor boy is something specific it can't just have like anything on it it's gotta have shrimp um, and like remoulade sauce bomber Italian sandwich baguette sarni I guess I call it a sub I don't eat uh, sandwiches of that type very often so it's not really uh, super relevant for me <laughs> replace with nothing. It is going to absolutely replace my uh, my regex. Of course it will. Of course it will, because this matches everything between a right and left parenthesis, which is this entire regular expression. I'm someone who made a mistake that is very understandable. All right, replace with that. And I'm gonna have to go back and do the sub myself because I uh, missed the A. Oh, that's right. Uh, my previous example only had uh, 11, uh, I think. So now I need to uh, add additional options. A through Z should be fine. I don't think there's going to be anything with more than 26 options. Uh, and I could be wrong about that. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, next question. Sub, probably. Uh, what do you call a small road that runs parallel to the highway? I'm covering the screen with my hand. Access road? Pretty sure. Pretty sure I call it an access road. All right, a uh, small road. Let's find that one. Uh, and I think I prefer what you call to which of these terms because it's not being presented as in multiple choice quiz for the users. So I hope this is interesting to watch, uh, or at least you can enjoy my uh, uh, enjoy my suffering. So the question is, what do you call the small road parallel to the highway? Uh, and then that is question 99, Q090. Uh, and then the answer is the last thing that we need. Uh, so, actually we can just do that first, can't we? Uh, and then remove the, the these ones. Hmm. Oh, maybe we can't. Hmm. 
All right, what's up? So it's a right parenthesis followed by any number of characters followed by a left parenthesis. No more occurrences. What is different about these? Is this a weird Unicode character? Is it the the uh, existence of the... Um, I'm pretty sure they all had percentage points in them. Interesting. Is it the wrap? Did I accidentally... Hmm. It's a period. Any number of questions? Deeply odd. Well, I guess this one will do by hand and hope it will work good in the future. Maybe it's because I tried to do them out of order. Who knows? Uh, access road, feeder road, gateway? Gateway something, but that's not what I'd call that. We have them, but I have no word for it, which is going to be uh, difficult. Uh, thing to match. Uh, slot to match, uh, because there's going to be a lot of variation in how people say that. So we may have to add an intent, potentially. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We're just getting started. Uh, but I do plan on having a, um, uh, a tutorial just on the Alexa bit out soon. All right, mysterious access road. All right, what do you call a sweetened carbonated beverage? Uh, this is another example of a question that we have in our quiz uh, example. What do you call a sweetened carbonated beverage? Let's go back, find it in the other one. I'll bring it over so you can bev. Ridge, generic term for sweetened carbonated beverage. Boop. Nope. Uh, and I think I'd, pr I'd probably say soda, but it's like, it doesn't bother me if someone says Coke. Uh, it's just not what I would say. Uh, and that is question 105. And here's our options, fizzy drink. Fizzy drink. These really wonka folks wandering around. Uh, da, da, da. Zero occurrences. Hmm. Mm, mysterious. Very mysterious. It did used to work, right? All right, so we have a uh, right paren followed by any number of characters followed by a left parenthesis, and these both have to be escaped. Works now. Deeply weird. Deeply weird. All right, noted. That is disquieting. I'm not entirely sure what that did. Maybe it was copying and pasting. Uh, one of the types of copying and pasting did something different maybe uh and i did actually want to replace this with a colon dope nope yep some people call it dope i guess that makes sense dope is another word for coke uh and i believe when it was first marketed coca-cola did in fact have cocaine in it uh make sure that is to z instead so i guess that makes sense all right, I'd probably say soda. Uh, a lot of people here in uh, in Seattle would say pop. As you can see, it's a little bit a little bit lighter here. Uh, what do you call the rubber soled shoes worn in gym class or for athletics activities? Uh, probably tennis shoes. Yeah, I think that's what my mom calls them. Uh. Uh, Pranav says, oh, uh, thank you. There's a little bit of a delay. Uh, Pranav says, type a random bracket percent and try that regex. Yeah, my guess is that one of those characters re was replaced by something that looked very similar to it, but was not actually one of those characters. Just like in that podcast that scared me so badly, except that time it was people. Mm, all right, all right, all right. 
Uh, pop this over. What do you call the rubber soled shoes worn by? I know that people who are really into them call them sneakers because sneaker heads are a thing, um, but not a hobby I've ever super gotten, super gotten into. And then uh, that is question 73. One, zero, seven, three. And then the, uh, the options are sneakers, shoes. It, okay, yes, technically they are shoes. Uh, replace you with nothing. In, and then we got this guy. Replace that with that, and the semicolon, and all of them. That's what I wanted. Uh, so the options are sneaker shoes, gym shoes, sand shoes, jumpers, tennis shoes, running shoes, runners, trainers. I have no general word for this, and other. Uh, so, yeah, I think I say, what did I say? I think I say tennis shoes. Uh, what do you call a big road that you drive on relatively fast? Uh, and the options are highway, freeway, parkway, turnpike, turnpike you gotta pay on, that's my thing, expressway, throughway, freeway is bigger than a highway, a uh, freeway is free, a highway isn't, a freeway has limited access, whereas a highway can have lights and intersections. Uh, let's grab the, the number of that one. We're looking for a road. Uh, and it is 79 Q07. Q0079. Zero, zero, and then our options are these ones. What do I call it? Highway. I think I call it highway. Because if someone's, because if I'm driving somewhere and it's, uh, it's mostly driving on a big road. I will say, is it highway driving? Oh, no. JK, I actually want to place that with nothing. Uh, so, yeah, pretty sure for me it's highway. But I also prefer not to drive whenever possible, so... Uh, I may not be the best knower of words about roads. Uh, and what we'll do, in case you're wondering why I have like a list here separated by semicolons, what we'll do is we will re read this into a list structure uh, and then use that to replace the numbers in our uh, smaller version of our data set, is my plan. So I think I say highway. What do you call a sale of unwanted items on your porch, in your yard, etc.? Yard sale, garage sale. Yard sale or garage sale? Yard sale, yard sale, I think. Uh, all right. Do you really get in your head about uh, uh, these types of, nope, I don't want the terms. Uh, I really get in my head about these types of questions. Um, because I, I know that there are like effects of the way the questions are asked and like, there's yard in the question, so maybe that's predisposing me towards yard sale uh, in a way that uh, I'm not entirely aware of. Q058, um, which is why I think that, uh, I might rephrase this so it doesn't have yard in it later on, uh, which is one of the reasons why I think a voice skill is a really good, or a chatbot is a really good way to do this type of elicitation, which I think I mentioned before, but uh, not everything needs to be a chatbot, but some things are improved by that. Hmm. Oh, right, I need to escape it. There we go. All right, paste that back. Why don't I just have this pasted someplace where it's not gonna be uh, destroyed every time, huh? Why don't I put it there? That could save me some time. All right, we are on question 13 in the quiz. And replace all those with a semicolon. All done. Uh, 
I don't know what you're thinking, Rachel. This is a lot of doing stuff by hand. Yep. Unfortunately, that's the case. Uh, uh, Ravi says, text is good, but what about emotion, which we humans beings understand without any talking? Uh, uh, for that, I would say you, you don't need NLP. All right. Oh, and we're here on the, uh, the aunt aunt question. I might, mm, I might, yeah, I might go through and rewrite the questions, um, for all of these where, uh, the word, like it's a pronunciation thing. Um, oh, it's question one. Q001. Nope. Uh, so just to look at the options, ah as an ah, ah as an ah, ah as an ought, uh, caught. I don't think, I don't think this is going to translate well. I think I'm just going to get rid of it. Because there's some possibility that you might get a difference in transcription between aunt and ants, like the little, little buggy bug, uh, in the uh, Alexa voice SDK, but I don't know that that's the case. Uh, I say both. I guess it depends. Actually, I think it depends on how the aunt, aunt in question says aunt. Um, like my Aunt Nancy. I think I just say it, eh. All right. Uh, what do you call as a traffic jam caused by uh, drivers slowing down to look at an accident or other diversion down the side of the road? I think rubbernecking? Rubbernecking. Okay. Yeah. Because it's like your, your neck is made of rubber and you're like, oh, I gotta look at things. Let's find traffic. Uh, and it is, nope, that's about a roundabout. There we go. It is question 107. Q 107. And I'm almost certainly going to have missed one comma somewhere in here. So when we try to read this in as a CSV, we will get some sort of, uh, uh, we'll get some sort of thing. Uh, rubbernecking is the activity. Oh, actually, I think that is what I say. Because Looky Lou is like the person who's doing the looking. All right. You for nothing. All of those. Thank you kindly. And you. Uh, replace with that and replace all. Yep. That's what I'm hoping for. Nope. Yep. Uh, I think this is going to be another one where it'll be hard to build a slot that's like other. Uh, and I think also what I can do to make my life easier is to come all the way down here with it and just put it below where we are currently. All right. Uh, that's probably me. Uh, do you call the sweet spread that's put on a cake frosting or icing? Uh, they are different things to me. I actually wrote a blog post about this a while ago, uh, where frosting is fluffy and icing is uh, not. So icing is like a like a royal icing. And that is question ninety four zero nine four, and our options are. Do you first? It would probably be quicker just to do this all in one big go, but I I guess I could change now. But I think it would make it hard to read through and parse the file uh, with my human eyes. And I just have to go through and do this part by hand, so meh. All right. Different things. How do you pronounce crayon? One syllable rhymes with man. Uh, this is another one that I don't think is going to translate well, so uh, I'm not going to do this one. Uh, how do you pronounce the first syllable of lawyer? 
Uh, I say lawyer. Definitely some people say lawyer. I think this will work. I think this will work with um, uh, some, some tweaking. Uh, so I think I would rephrase it. Uh, does the first syllable of lawyer rhyme with boy or law when you say it? Uh, and hopefully the uh, the intonation will be correct. Otherwise, that's going to be a really hard question to answer via voice. All right, and then lawyer. It is question fourteen. Q O one four, and uh, it is boy. And there's a bunch of um, IPA over here. IPA is the International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, and I'm just going to uh, ignore that. Both and other. Meh, that may or may not work. We'll see. We'll, we'll try it. Once we actually have a quiz that works uh, and I have a way to host it, people can take it and give me feedback on it. How do you pronounce the words Mary, Mary, and Mary? This is absolutely not going to work for me, and these are all the same. Mary, Mary, Mary. Yeah. My mom has a difference. Um, what do you call the large wild cat native to the Americas? There is a panther in uh, Florida. It's called the Florida panther, which is a different cat. Uh, so that might confuse people. But also Florida is sort of a dialectal weird zone because there's a lot of immigration into it from other dialect regions in the United States. Um, and also there's obviously a strong um, linguistic substrate of, of Spanish. Um, so it does tend to behave a little bit differently. Kitty. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, this is another one that might not exist. Okay, so what's the question? Large wild cat native to the Americas. Cat? All right, it's definitely gonna be in the lexical items section. This may be another one that we just don't have. Great feature, will contraption. I don't remember reading it, uh, but it could have been added. Bear claw, pigeon toad. Winter supper, cutter mo, blah, blah, blah. I'm just, I'm reading them very quickly and I don't want to read them aloud. Um, I don't see it. Uh, Ryan says, are people responding to this verbally potentially? Yeah, so what people are gonna do is the, it'll, it'll be verbal, so Alexa will be like, does the first syllable of lawyer rhyme with boy or law when you say it. And then you'd answer, oh boy, or nah, I think it's law. Uh, and then that answer would be taken and matched with one of the existing answers. And if it doesn't match one super well, it would be stuck to other. Um, and that's what we will use as the input features for our classifier. Um, so yeah, it's not multiple choice because I don't want to, the problem with multiple choice is that it, uh, peace out. Uh, the problem with multiple choice, I think I say mountain lion. Uh, is that it does not, um, it predisposes people to think about like one or the other answer and you want people to just like go with their gut and be like, like, what, like the example we had with like crayfish and I was like, what do I say? What do I say? Do I say crawdad? Do I say crayfish? Do I say crawfish? Um, maybe I do say crayfish. No, I definitely say crawdad. I think it depends on the, the example. Uh... Kitty corner is definitely what I would say there, but let's see if we can find the, yeah, okay. Uh, or, or, and that's not an option on here. I can also say catawampus, which I think is an older term from Virginia. Um, I think my, my grandpa said catawampus and he, he was from um, uh, Norfolk, <laughs> which he told me uh, a very off color joke about when I was a uh, young child. <laughs> Uh, my grandpa was a trip. Anyway, uh, it is question 76. 
I know I'm getting a little a little off topic, but you got it. You got to keep the data entry fun somehow. Uh, 76. And then our options are kitty corner, cat corner, catter corner, catty corner, kitty cross, catty wampus, kitty wampus. I don't think it was kitty. I think it was cat a uh, wampus, cat a wampus, not kitty. Pretty sure. Uh, and then I can only use diagonal for this. Do, do, do. I'm okay with that. Or diagonal. Uh, all right. Or non-orthogonal. I think I would also accept, but probably not in like a fun family context. <laughs> all right. We are getting there. We have four questions left in the quiz. Kitty corner. Yeah, definitely what I say. Uh, oh, interesting. Not a southern thing. What do you call the insect that flies around in the summer and glows in the dark? That is a lightning bug. Uh, also, if you are interested in lightning bugs, there's a really good uh, David Attenborough documentary that came out a couple years ago. I think it's called... <sighs> anyway, it's about photo uh, bioluminescence as a sort of um, area of study. And it's really interesting. And there's a big long section on lightning bugs. And if you like documentaries, I would recommend it. It's called something. Uh, glows, maybe? Yeah. Uh, it's question 64 is what it is. Q, zero, six, five. I said 64, but it is, in fact, 65. <laughs> Peeny Wally? Excuse me? Stop the presses. What the heck? Okay, one person in Texas and one person in Wisconsin call it a peeny wally. All right. Uh, Ryan says, I was doing something like this with a Canadian friend, and the problem was if you ask them how do you say lawyer, you are biasing them by saying lawyer your way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of work on good survey design for sociolinguistic elicitation, and it is a hard question. All right, I think we're getting close to finding out where I'm from, uh, lightning bug. I mean, I, fireflies are fine, but I, I would say lightning bug. Uh, what do you call the area of grass between? I don't have a word for it. Uh, between the sidewalk and the road. Like if you, if you said verge, I'd know what you mean. All of the rest of these, I would not know what you meant. Peeny Wally, are you kidding me? Never heard that term in my life. Uh, if you say that, I would be delighted to hear more about it. Uh, and I believe this is actually a pretty uh, s distinguishing lexical item for some people, this particular one, like the little strip of grass, because I think there was a court case where a linguistic anthropologist, like there was a, somebody who did something, I don't know what the crime was, uh, and the linguistic anthropologist was looking at a letter that they'd written, and they're like, leave the money on the, the berm or whatever, um, and they used that to identify the area where the person was from. So, in general, uh, linguistics in the courtroom is... Very scary, very scary. Um, yeah, the American justice system is something. There was, for example, a court case where uh, someone requested a lawyer by saying, uh, give me a lawyer dog, like D-A-W-G, like the term of address. Um, yes, it, they were. Um, and the cops argued that um, they thought that he was asking for a dog that was a lawyer and not requesting legal representation. And I believe they won that case. So that's, yep. Anyway, 
Uh, I don't know that I have any good resources to put you uh, to point you towards at this point, but uh, I know that um, uh, John Rickford, who recently retired, has done a lot of work on that. So, or the justice system and uh, linguistic discrimination in general. Hey, this is the question that tells you where I'm from. Uh, what do you call a drive through liquor store? That is a brew through, my friends. I think I've talked about this before on the stream. Uh, very, very localized term. Uh, do, 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 do. Not going to be super discriminative for everybody. Drive through liquor store. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, a bad idea. <laughs> uh, but 118. U118, and then the options are brew through, party barn, bootlegger, beer barn, beverage barn. We have these in my area, but I have no special term for them, uh, and I've never heard of such a thing. And then other. Usually, I will say, you, they don't like give you a mixed drink that you can drink in the car. Um, usually, you get like it's like sealed. Uh, although there's some places where you can get a mixed drink and it's served to you in like a little, like a sealed cup, sort of like a boba. Um, listen, I'm not saying it's a good idea. I think just saying that it exists. And I believe this is going to be our last question. Uh, what do you call the thing that you drink water from that you might drink water from which you might drink water at a school? Uh, that's a water fountain. I know bubbler is like a northeast thing, I think. Okay, let's see. Da, da, da. Nope. Uh, water. Uh, yep. Let's see. Bubbler is uh wisconsin and uh, yeah the northeast drinking fountain that's huh like if you called it that i wouldn't be like what is that but that's definitely not the word that i have uh 103 is the question and then your answers are bubbler water bubbler drinking fountain water fountain and other and this should be the last question, thankfully. Oh, five occurrences replaced. Yep. 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 Yep, that is the response. Okay. Okay, so we've ended up with 19 questions, which I think is probably still plenty. We'll probably have slightly less good accuracy than the original. I don't know that that's true. I don't know what the accuracy of... Um, oh, uh, fun fact. Uh, my mom is from Missouri, uh, and a lot of my kinfolk are from up there. Um, Richmond, it, it says, is likely. That's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm from near Richmond. Um, sort of there-ish. Uh, yeah, and then my, my mom grew up here, and my, uh, my grandpa's from there. Um, yeah, so that's, that's my map, uh, which I think is uh, fairly, uh, uh, fairly accurate. Um, Rockford, I, I don't know about, I don't know what that is. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing with voice. So I'm thinking that the answer, what we'll probably say to people, uh, the, the response that they'll get is like, okay, the three most similar cities for you are St. Louis, Richmond, and Rockford. I don't, Rockford, Illinois, I guess. Um, and then I think it would be really, really great because one of the things that you can get from a um, uh, XG boost is the most discriminative feature, so the thing that was most um, telling. Uh, and I think it would be really helpful to be like, and the thing that is most characteristic of your dialect is that you call it a bubbler, I guess, uh, or something like that. So that's the idea, and it is, oh my god, it's 1090. Uh, time goes fast when you're just uh, entering in a uh, text, I guess. 
<laughs> uh, Dagm, Dagm A says, I knew you were a St. Louisian, St. Louisian at heart, I guess. My cousins, my cousins live there. Um, I think my mom would probably identify more closely with Kansas City. She was, she was so excited <laughs> for the Super Bowl. Uh, like as the, as the Chiefs are doing really well this season, she kept like texting me and being like, they're going to go, they're going to go all the way. Um, anyway. I love my mom. That's the that's the whole story there. She's fantastic. All right, so <laughs> we've been doing this for an hour and a half. Uh, now that we've done our data nonsense, uh, next week we'll actually, and by next week, yeah, next week on Wednesday, we will actually do some classifier training uh, and figure out if we can get this to be um, good to go into, into our bot. But this is the information that we need. Uh, and we have the text responses or rather we have the, the information responses and we will use this uh, CSV to um, uh, create our model and select only of the questions that we need. And uh, yeah. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. Thanks for joining me and I hope you all have a great weekend and I will see you on Wednesday. Talk to you then, bye.